Right, go back to our first video we've done on this to get to this point, and you'll see what I did was, I did this outline with my finger to say roughly this is what the panel is. And look at this, I just shoved this on. Look at that! Hit it there, hit it there, I lost it there, but from there to there, absolutely perfect. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Yes, we are back on this. The first video, well not actually the first video of this vandalized series. Um, we've done some mechanical work, check it out. DOE failed, they've just put holes everywhere. Ridiculous. Anyway, go and check it out. You'll see what I think of it. Let me know what you think of it. So we have to obviously do this because it was rusty. We know it was rusty, but obviously with rust, it's not what you can see. It's always what you can't see. So even though this was rusty here, you know, the chances of this not being rusty is slim to none. And it was very, very rusty. So we had to make this. And I showed how to make these, all these little dimples, these bends, very, very easy. We actually made that with a spanner um, and did the rest with a vise. Very, very easy, very, very uh, quick. So we did buy a panel because we got two, two of these panels so cheap. Um, it wasn't, 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 practical for me to make this which i could have done but it would have took a lot lot longer um and for the price of these panels it just didn't make sense so um you know this this lip here especially this you know again would have been hard but not impossible by any stretch of the imagination just would have took a lot of time the only thing that was annoying it's come very close to the edge of this panel which i really didn't want to happen i didn't want to come to that panel but what i might end up doing because this is really, well, to be honest, it's gone. Yeah, look, the panel's gone. So, um, I wanna keep that line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut all this sealer off. Can you get all that sealer off? Yeah, I'm gonna cut that sealer off to there and I will weld inside there, but then I'll get the grinder to come in to cut this line and then we'll put sealer on so it looks like it's, you know, it's factory because I'm not gonna be able to do anything with that inside there like that. So that's what I'm gonna do with that. It's gonna look factory. It's gonna be fine. Then we just put the sealer over the top and everyone's happy. <clears throat> but like I said, to watch the first video, how we got to this part. What I've now got to do is I've got to work out exactly how much of this panel I am using and what um, method I'm going to use because I talked about in the first video doing a lap joint now people have this really bad opinion of lap joints where if you think about it most the joints on a car is a lap joint this is a lap joint it's just not it's going vertically um, you know they they're not a problem if you use them right it's it's like scotch locks of the automotive world people think they're terrible but they're actually not they've got their place so when I normally do a lap joint, especially on something like this, because a lap joint, especially on a really flexible panel like this, a lap joint is a lot stronger and it stops the panel from warping as much. It's easier to control. So it does have its, it does have its advantages. Now where people seem to have such a big issue with a lap joint, so if you imagine this being a lap joint here, and you can see that you've got a, a, a ledge there and the water sits on there and supposedly rusts it out, which, hey, yes, it, look, it does happen. The way I do a lap joint is I do it the opposite way. So in other words, rather than dishing out this panel and point on, which will make your lap joint on the inside like that, you can dish out this panel and it'll make your lap joint on the inside face down. So water can't get trapped there. It, it flows down past the joint, just like slates on your roof. Same, same principle. Um, but not all the time, and depending on where you are, not all the time can you actually bend this panel to do that. But even if we can't, there's still other things we can do. You can see there's holes in this panel here. Uh, I'll show you there in a second. So regardless what I do with, 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 with this, 
even when you weld it. That's another thing people don't realise. You butt weld this. You've got all the bubbles of weld behind that water can sit on. And people don't ever mention that. Oh, you can't do a lap roll, it will rust, it will do this. But hold on, the, 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 the butt joint of the weld would do the same. Unless you can get in there and grind it off, which you can't. Anyway. Um, so, what I'm going to do is, I'm, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet. I've still got to see, can I step this out is this too thick for my stepper if i can't step this out then i'm not maybe not necessarily going to do the lap joint um, but i've got to work out exactly how much i'm going to keep the thing with the lap joint is it's normally a lot easier to have like if if, if it was a butt joint i don't mind having all these different angles um it's not really a problem but with a step with a with a lap joint it's normally easier to have one line and then say you know a, a 90 degree angle there whatever the case may be it's just normally easier to do it that way and weld it it does mean we'll be cutting out all this technically good metal but when i feel it behind here it's not really good metal the all the inside of the van is going to be rusty that's just what they are um so yeah and it like i said it'll just make it easier for me and then we we'll maybe come down here so we're going to have we're going to have a step like that because I, I don't want to cut into that too much because that is that is good so we're gonna if i do a lap joint we're gonna have something that looks like that there i'm guessing anyway what i'm gonna do just off camera i'm gonna clean all this up i'm going to cut this out because i've got the return lip on my repair panel so i'm gonna clean all this off and cut this off I accidentally cut into there, so I'm going to re-weld that. But I just want to really want to see what's in behind here, because I can see there's rust here. Um, so I just really need to see what's in behind there. I'll do that off camera, and then we can get cracking on this. This has completely changed things. I was not expecting literally half an inch of fillers there. And I do not know how far that goes up. So, this changes a lot because we've got fillers a lot of fillers all the way here so i could just keep going back and back and back and there's just going to be fillers i can see a big crack here obviously for that's all fillers i can see that this is all fillers i can just see a lot a lot a lot of fillers so now this is the thing what do i do here i've got a couple of different options i can because this fill is here and there's a lot of fillers i could just butt weld or overlap this panel here and weld it and then just fade the fillers in because this i, I can't take all that off because i'd be chasing it god knows where i wanted to do this properly but this is now caused me a problem um i don't know what to do so I could bring my other panel, bring my new panel up through here uh, and weld it across there and fill it. I could butt weld it, but even if I butt weld it, I've still got to put all these fillers back. I've still got to fade these fillers out. I, I was going to put maybe a tiny bit of fillers on, but it was going to be a very, very small amount. Do you know? this not, not this this is this is a huge amount i mean whoever did this particular part i mean to be fair it's done well um that that is not done well but this is done quite well so this has changed things now i'm just gonna have to keep grinding some of these fillers off and figure out what i'm gonna do next right i've made up my mind i'm gonna do a lap joint um slightly different to the way i was gonna do it i was gonna you know kink this metal in so when the new one comes up i could grind the weld and it'd be perfectly flush and only a very very little bit of fillers now with the amount of fillers that's on here that's just not that's just not going to happen so i'm going to just basically weld this panel directly on top of this panel going all the way across here what that will do is that will keep the strength in it it's still a lap joint but I won't have to put as much fillers on because the panel's slightly off where it should be. So the fillers is going to be a lot, lot less. Um, and especially here, it's just, here is, there's just shitloads of fillers. Here, I should just be able to blend that fillers down. Um, 
and it should be a million times better. There's no other way around it for this particular vehicle. Like I said, if this was something, you know, worth a fortune, you're restoring it, to be honest, you're gonna have to start going all the way up there and replacing God knows what. Um, I can see that this fill is definitely comes to about here somewhere, maybe even further. And then it goes all the way up. It goes here. Oh, I just look, I don't know. I'm not going to get involved in it because um, this is just a work vehicle at the end of the day. You know, what we'll then do is with these holes here that you can see, the water won't be able to sit on here because the lap joint's going to be the opposite way, like I was explaining before. Um, but then with these holes here, I'll just squirt loads and loads of wax oil in here, get it all coated on in here, and that will protect it. Um, it's going to be a million times better than what it was. All I'm going to do now is figure out how much I can cut off the panel. I know roughly what I need, and then I'm going to sneak up on it and try and get the panel to fit where, you know, I might have to go slightly higher. The only lucky thing is all this is really good metal. This is what I can't work out is why is there so much fillers here when this metal is perfect? Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. It must have got caved in and someone just put a load of fillers rather than trying to repair it. It's my guess. I just wanted to show you these few things because they might come in handy for you. Uh, normally, this is this is completely changed everything i wouldn't have cut the panel like this if i knew this um anyway so now we find ourselves in this situation we need to know where to cut our panel i've been i've been cutting it down very very slowly to get it more or less where i know we're still okay so we're more or less good there what i've done is I've marked on the body where I put these lines. So in other words, you can see where this one goes and you, can, you might not be able to see it on camera, but I put a massive score mark on the body here and I put it all the way up through the paint. We are painting this line from here down. So I can do anything I want within this area across all the van, it's not gonna affect anything. So then what you do is you put your panel up, you see your lines. So then I transfer the lines to my panel so I know this mark here in my panel is that there. Now I don't want to cut to that because I, I want to have an overlap. So I'm going to go come up here 10 mil, but I know I can come up here and go straight up there now, take that bit off, and I know I'm not going to be below this panel. Once I've got that bit off, I can then start doing all my other measurements across here, coming across here, all the way across here, marking it on this and doing that. So I just showed you that. I'm not filming all this because this is just really boring cutting, fitting, cutting, fitting. Once I get my panel in this where I've got the metal, then I'll turn the camera back on. Another handy thing you can do, we're getting there now, we're getting quite close. It's more or less lined up. It's not too bad down there. Um, but again, coming to, you can see all our marks. Hopefully you can see all my scratch marks here now. They line up, look, all with the body panels and everything. Again, I have gone higher than the marks because I'm gradually creeping up on it. But if you're all, because it's always the corners and the edges that cause your problem. So what you can actually do, look, I know this mark here, but what you can actually do is rather than if, you, if you're worried about cutting all that thinking, oh, I don't know, just cut the corner and slightly lift the panel. If I can do it one handed, I can't do it one handed. Anyway, you slightly lift the panel and you can see where you're going. I can't do it one handed, but you get the idea. Just take your time, get it close before you just start going mental on it. Right, remember I said about taking it slow, nice and easy, so you don't cause any issues. The last cut I did, I caused myself a bit of a problem. Now, it's not the end of the world. I had this up against here like that, and I marked my cut, as you can see. I moved that out of the way. It's absolutely perfect, right? And I was like, that's okay. Then I realized, well, now hold on a second, look. This is all the way in here. This has to come out and down to there. And when that comes down to there, I'll just get this in so I can kind of hold it. All right. When that comes down to there where it should be, more or less there, look at the gap I've got there now. Can you see that? Is the camera showing you that? Now it's not a problem because I have to weld inside here anyway. So just to fill up that little bit is not the end of the world but still kind of annoying. Um, 
But anyway, once you're happy with your cut and everything, the next thing to do is get some sort of scribe and scribe where your panel finishes on your car. You're not trying to cut your panel down to the line you've cut unless that's what you're going for. I just wanted to get it close because now I can actually take this off um, and we can see where our line is. Because what I want to do is I want to joggle the, the, this inner panel now. Because the fillers is really thick here, it's quite thin there, it's really thick up here, and just here, it's really thin. So you can see I've started, and I just want to show you what the joggler does. It's really good actually. It just puts a little step in your panel on this side, and this side it puts a little hole for spot welding. You can see the step it does, and all you do is you put this in, and it puts a step in the panel. Now, what that does is, again, hopefully the camera will show this. So I've got a step in there now, and because I've marked my panel, I know I can cut, now you have to me measure your juggler, but you cut the thickness of your juggler, juggler, your jogger, um, whatever that happens to be, you cut that first, and then you can joggle this panel Exactly, because what happens is, hopefully the camera's going to show this. Again, look, it's not really a big deal for me in this situation because the amount of fillers we've got up here. But what it does, you can see that, that now basically is flush with that panel. Let me just show you that. Just cut off the burr of the panel. If I put that back now, roughly, and push that in, look, this now, see that? That panel is basically flush. Where I come to here, see, we've got a step. We've got a one mil step. And that's essentially put that one mil step into the panel so there's no step. So this is what I was originally gonna do. I was gonna joggle this panel, use our lap joint, and then that one mil step that it's put into it, we, we don't really have a lot of fillers because as this cools down and shrinks, it's gonna push in a little bit anyway. So we'll only have a very, very fine layer of fillers. We won't have all this, but because we've got all this, we don't really need the juggle on there. I'm just gonna put it on there because it just, what, it, what it's really good for is it gives the, this panel a bit of strength as well but it means you don't have to grind down your welds as much because if you've ever done any bodywork panel, you know grinding down welds is that's the hardest and really boring thing to do. Where if you can just knock the heads of the weld off because it's filling that gap, happy days, happy days. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go around, cut off the rest of that and I'll juggle it and then there's nothing more I can do with it today, unfortunately, because I haven't got, I need to get bits from inside here so I can't weld it on, but what I am going to do, and I don't know, I think I have to leave this, this panel on here. I'm gonna cut it off a little bit. Obviously I have to weld that. I wanted to cut this off completely, but the problem is I got that much fillers on here. If I cut that off completely, it's even worse. I can now see there must be, I don't know, a five, six mil gap here on top of that. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to weld up to here and weld up to here and bend this lip over, but keep this structure here, bend this lip over so I can weld it to the car or the van and then just fill from here to here. So I'm just gonna put that rather than trying to blend the fillers all the way down. If I take this panel off and this panel goes in even further, it's gonna be even worse. Um, and like I said, I will put some um, wacker oil inside here, which will stop a lot of the crap building up. And we just have to remember to do that, you know, every year. Um, but you can see, look, when that panel goes flat, like there's just no, there's no angle there at all. There should be an angle that there just isn't. It is just, it's bad people, it's bad. <laughs> Now 
now that should be the perfect distance for me juggler now you have to run up and down it a few times and it kind of you'll feel it going Now the camera might not show it, but there's definitely an indentation there. And, oh yes, look at that. Again, camera's not gonna show it, but lovely. It's what we need. Anyway, you don't need to see this. I'm going to continue all the way down there and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like. And then I have to wait till tomorrow to get more parts to finish off that. Right, that's our panel fitted. Um, our lip underneath, which I'll show you, once we get it all welded in, is good. I might, what I might do is it's just hanging a bit low. So once I get all this welded on, I think I'll just get a, um, a chisel and just give that a slight different bend just to push that lip up a little bit but apart from that you can now see that our panel is more or less once it gets pressed in flush all the way i mean how cool is that little bit oh it's not too bad there but that little juggle really has made all the difference now like i said it hasn't really made a difference for this particular case because it's full of filler um but it will make a difference if you are don't want to put too much fillers on uh so what i'm gonna have to do tomorrow is get all the other bits i need for the inside of this get it all seal, uh, sprayed sealed and then come to weld this on and put some fillers on it because what we plan to do with the whole side from this lip underneath here i'm going to rub down the whole side i'm going to put some white schultz on it um, but it's not like this is diamond white I believe and it's kind of a creamy Schultz So what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely white Schultz it then I'm going to just get out of a spray can uh, Some diamond white which is the Ford color Because uh, I can get it mixed and then just as the just as the stuff's going off I'm going to spray the Ford diamond white so it's actually colored Ford diamond white You'll still get the effect of the Schultz, you know that kind of really bad orange peel effect, but it will also help for, you know, because it's stone chip essentially, it will also help for all the stones bouncing off. And when you're, when you're a bit further away, you won't really notice. Most cars, like even this underneath here on the sill, has it anyway. We're just going a bit higher with it. And it will also help fade in our, um, our fillers and stuff, do you know? And like I said, we won't have to use a lot of fillers. I'm only going to be filling from here to there and from there to there. I'm not blending all the way down because there's just no point. I don't want to be using fillers. Normally, if I was to do this, I'd only be filling just where I'm welding. A very, very thin layer um, with something like this. If I didn't want to use fillers and if it was, you know, doing something, you know, really expensive, as long as you can get to the back side of it, I'd actually TIG it. Because what you can do with TIG welding, as you're TIGging it, you can actually hammer form the TIG weld and push the, push the weld flat. And then you can dolly it out so you use very, very little fillers. And if you really go to town on it, like spend hours upon it, you can do it with no fillers. When I get the vehicle in like that, I will show you how to basically make a panel and do it with no fillers whatsoever. But it wouldn't pay to do it on a transit, um, <laughs> do you know? So it's like everything, it's only when, it, when, it's, when it's the right vehicle. But anyway, that's gonna fit nicely. It's gonna, um, it's gonna be all right. Just wasn't expecting all that fillers. Right, what we need to do now is we just need to protect this rust, the, the service rust that's on it. And I'm using this Loctite Rust Remedy. There's loads of different types out there. And all I'm going to do is just literally brush it on. So it's got a little brush. Let's shove it in here. 
and literally just do that over everywhere let it do its magic it will turn all the rust black kind of oh I didn't weld inside there did I, I have to do that Now I'll do the same on the inside, and that's us done. <clears throat> right, okay, we've, that's all drying now. Um, what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna rub down, because we're gonna come from here down. So we're gonna rub all this down with 120, which is a bit rough, but we're just scuffing it up for the stone chip slash Schultz. Uh, get all the loose, flaky paint off, all the old sealer, which is all here, like it's all flaking off here. With a bit more heavier rust here, hasn't gone through, still solid, but we're just gonna get a, maybe a floppy disk on that and you know really grind that down, get that all out of it. Put the uh, rust treatment on it as well before we actually come to um, paint it. Cause I now what I've got to, I've got to do this, I've got to weld this up. I've got a few more little spots of rust here I wanna get all treated. I've got to undercoat this I'm going to seal all my welds. I'm also gonna prime it. So, I'm gonna, so I've got some etch primer for the bare steel. I'm going to seal it. I've got some primer. I've also got some, um, what else have we got? We've got some red oxide. I've also got wax oil. So I can, I'm gonna put a load of wax oil under here, all in here first, because I'm only, I'm not on the back of here, but just, just up here. So you can see just up there, look, get all that nicely protected with wax oil as much as, as much as I can get in there and then I can always do it afterwards because once I spray in here I can get into the back of this. Um, so I just want to get everything, as, I'm doing both sides obviously, so I'm, everything I'm doing this side I'm going to be doing underneath where I repaired it as well. Right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to seal all my welds with Tiger Seal. This is all nice and dry. I'm just using Tiger Seal. Just to seal everything. Hopefully this isn't. I think I've cleaned out this tube. I've got some new stuff if I haven't. No. That's the worst thing about Tiger Seal. You use it, you have to use it all. Did you just send it up for some? How much are they? I think they're like 23, 22 quid a box. That's what they are now. So everything's doubled in price. I used to do that and realise it's the wrong way to do it. Okay. So what you do, what I do now, you spit in the palm of your hand and you take it out the puddle because otherwise you're putting that shit in your mouth all the time. So I just do that and then I keep feeding off the puddle. Good idea. And it's done. Yeah, but I'm trying to go. <laughs> you don't have to later. <laughs> but no, um, what's this yoke here? That. Compressor. Oh, okay. My upright compressor, the one I got for the van. Oh, is that what it is? Right, so I'm going to do the same with the weld I've got on the inside, then we can actually start painting this in all nicely sealed. Right, what I'm going to do next is any of the exposed metal I'm going to use etch primer. And if you remember years and years ago, if you was working with your dad and he would just be barking orders at you because you've stopped for literally two seconds. He's come down to give me a hand and he hasn't stopped being on the phone. That's all he's done in like two hours. 
Yeah, but I've got ten girlfriends. What's that got to do with it? Well, it keeps me busy. I've come down to give you a hand because you haven't got it done. Silly string! Happy Christmas! My job's done for the day. Well, they can't see me anyway. I'm not doing anything anyway. Right, so any exposed it's metal it's, areas? Does it see any of that? It's not on camera. It is. It is. Do you want a bet? It looks like it's on camera to me. I'm not sure, yeah. So, X Prime is just for exposed metal, nothing else. Um, Right, first coat of just primer. You can really see, see the shape of the piece that I made now coming through. Copper coats of that, same on the inside, and uh, we're getting close to welding. I think so. Right? It's sounded different the grinder. Right, you can see we've rubbed all this down and we've got a lot of metal underneath here, especially around the door here where it's just some surface rust. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat that all with the rust treatment again, get all that sealed before we actually paint it. Uh, this is now undercoated. So what I'm going to use next is some red oxide. Um, red oxide all that do exactly the same treatment with this so um, rust treatment zinc primer undercoat red oxide then i'm going to wax oil inside here then we can actually weld this here right like i said it's always what you can't see which is the problem so underneath this step this is all gone. This is going to be for another video, but while I've got some help, I'm going to get all this cleaned out, ready for welding. So all of the old flaky bits of paint off, all grinded down, all the old bits cut out, ready for the new bits to be welded in. Right, now what I'm going to do is wax all this. Oh no, I'll just wax all the bloody panel. All under here. Why is this not coming out now? Oh. oh, I've been shaking this can for 10 minutes straight. Oh, fucking thing. Right, I've got all that wax on as much as I can without putting the panel on. And once I've got the panel welded on, I can actually do a lot more wax oiling a lot better. Right, all I've done, I've just tapped it in place. I've drilled some holes in the bottom so I can spot weld it. And I've obviously left big gaps where the actual... Uh, cut out we made um, I've just tack welded it in just so I can you know it's easy for me to explain we're gonna have some issues from here on because I knew the metal was very thin now and blowing through so we're gonna have some issues from here on but we're gonna have issues anyway because there was a big huge gap here so what I'm gonna do is because I don't want to you know cake this in fillers and there's tons of fillers here already so I kind of this is the only way I can really do it is I'm just gonna basically bend the top five or six mil of metal over so I can weld it to the van and then I'm only filling about you know an inch and a half all the way I'm not having to bring fillers down here or anything and you know there's over I don't know five six mil of fillers here if not more which is just crazy so I can just fill just there and blend it down 
and it's going to be fine. Um, but the good thing about doing the, the lap joint, which I've done, you can now see, I've only spotted in a few spots, but look, it's so strong. The whole panel is moving. Missed. It's so, so strong, where if I was trying to do a butt joint, this would be a lot, a lot flex more flexible and potentially a lot easier to warp um, because of what we're doing, the way we're doing it. It's being a van, we can get away with this. Loads of wax all inside underneath, it's not going to be a problem. But again, I'm still going to take my time welding it because we can still warp it. So I'm just going to put some spot welds next to these ones and keep going, keep going, let it cool down, keep going. But I'm not, not going to let it, I'm not going to cool it down with air because that is one of the worst things you'll ever do. Um, that will just cause the metal to shrink even more. And when metal shrink, when you weld it and metal shrinks, it's just going to do this. It just will. That's what, that's why you have to fill it. And then when you, if it shrinks even more, it could do that and start warping all over the place, which is what we don't want. So hopefully you can see what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to get in the way when I'm welding or am I? Yeah, I'm going to have to move the camera. keep doing make sure it's not moving to get a big tack inside here because we didn't manage to get one in there before no No, let me move the camera to that side. A bit more comfortable for me now, I think. Yeah. Right, when I make panels or when I get panels to fit like this, I always like to have the panel bowing out. And the reason is because when you weld it, it wants to shrink in. If you have it pushed too far in, it's going to shrink even more in. So at least now the panel kind of bowing out a little bit as I tack weld, it's going to be shrinking in and going flat, if that makes sense. Um, so again, but what you have to keep doing is every time you do a bit of weld, going back with your hammer, tapping it in, but hopefully. I can get this right because we made this little step look at that see there is no step in this panel can you see that where if you was to do it uh, and just overlap it you're going to have a step but because we've put a because we've actually joggled this part of the metal it's completely flat see um and the little gap that we do have between here and the juggle, the weld's going to fill that. So as I grind the head of the weld off, that's going to be really nice and flush. So this type of job will only take the very, very smallest amount of fillers that you need. Where you do it any other way, if you do a step joint or anything like that, you're going to have to put loads of fillers on. But I have to put loads of fillers on anyway to match up with all the bloody fillers that's on here, which is just a nightmare, unfortunately. Another good thing about doing this type of weld, when you do a butt joint, um, what I see some people do is, and again, this is for MIG welding, it's different when you TIG. I'll show TIG welding. TIG welding is a million times better in a lot of ways, but you have to be able to get to the back of the panel. Um, I see people get a really, you know, they, they, they butt the joints up together where there's no gap in it. And then they, they grind down the weld and they say, look, you can't see the weld. You'll always see MIG weld, no matter what, even under three inches of fillers, you just will. I'll explain that in another video. Um, but the, the really good thing about this is, 
we've got, we're not going to be grinding down a lot of the weld because the gap that we've made between the original metal and our new panel, the weld's going to fill that. So as we grind it down, we're going to flush the weld. There's going to be a lot of weld still left there. When you do a butt joint and you grind the weld, you're grinding 95% of the weld off. So when I do a butt joint, what I like to do is, with my cutting disc, I like to leave... Uh, with my with, with the cutting disc, I like to leave a one mil gap between the two panels. This way, when you weld and you grind the weld off, you've got one mil of weld in between two panels. It's very very strong. Where if you butt joint them up really close. close together and you weld it and grind it off you've grinded most of the weld off it's going to snap it's going to break it's going to look horrible this this way is a hell of a lot stronger um and you, we're we're, we're going to be grinding two three percent of the weld off and leaving 98 percent of the weld there um and it's going to be so much you can feel it now just even with a few tack welds and the panel isn't hot at all which is really good i just need to get a couple more spots in the middle there because there's a bit of too much of a gap so get that pushed together And metal work and fabrication and stuff like that, look, it is easy. It, it, it truly is easy. Um, it just takes time. And the more you do it, the, the better you become. You know, the first time you're ever going to do a weld and make a panel, it might not look great. You know, you might be grinding down twice as long. You might be re-welding it a lot because you're making a few mistakes. But you do with the second one, you're not going to be making as many mistakes. Learning... Uh, by doing is a million times better because all the little mistakes that you're going to make you, you know you, you'll only do it once when you watch someone's video and they're explaining a lot the little mistakes that they've made you can pick up on that too and you know it's, it's just going to make it a lot easier for you um so i'm just trying to now right we need to get a little bit more down here and down there then this panel is becoming very strong. See there now it's pushed itself in really quite nicely. But the key with welding panels is patience. Just do spots at the time, let it cool down, and the only way you know it's cooled down is by hand. Put your hand over it. If you can put your hand on it, and it's not burning you, and it's cool to the touch, you can carry on welding. And another thing I see with welding is, you know, the MIG weld is not set up properly. And look, unless you're MIG welding every single day, all different types of thickness of metal, it is quite difficult to set up a MIG welder. The easiest thing to do is, is you get off cuts of metal and you practice on the two off cuts to see if you're burning through, to see if the penetration's right and all that. Or just do what I did and get a Fronius Transteel 2200 <laughs> because it's got synergy mode and it automatically does everything for you so i'll show you that also in a second um that i can go from one mil to 1.2 to 1.5 to three mil four mil within a switch within a toggle of a switch it is awesome people it is absolutely bloody awesome right. so we know we've got a big hole down here to deal with but that's that was my fault completely my fault right you also notice I'm not going to be doing any spot welding on the bottom 
because I have to move this panel slightly up because you know Spurious panels, they never fit great anyway. You always have to tweak them. So once I get the top well, I'm just going to hit this up a little bit just to move this panel up slightly. Uh, again, I don't have to. I just want to get it a bit nicer fit. Uh, and I messed up with this little hole here. Um, but again, not a big deal. I could, I can, I might actually show you how I, I, I can completely weld that. I don't have to put a little piece in. I know I can weld that uh, completely shut. It will take a few minutes, but I know I can do it. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to let this cool down. It's actually, it is quite cool. I can let it cool down for a few more minutes because I need to kind of get up here, but I'm worried. Actually, it's completely cold down here, so let's just do a bit more up top here. I know I'm going to have an issue from here to here with the thin metal. I know I am. see if I can just get a spot at least in here I've still got a gap here right it's a fairly big gap which I could just weld and I could plug up the gap um, actually I might actually do that so because the more I leave this sticking out the less fillers I have to put on so I'll actually I'll do that So I've left that panel sticking out that few mil because it saves a bit more fillers. But I think from about there onwards, I'm going to struggle. I think I should be okay here. Mm, maybe not. So from there to here, and two inches, I know I'm going to struggle. let that cool down now and figure out what I'm gonna do there um, don't know yet I might just let it blow through and just fill it up with wells because the less wells or the more well the less filler right I'm gonna get you to show you this how I would tackle this big hole here now what I'm gonna do with the weld again I'm gonna take it slowly but I'm going to put some spots of weld on each lip here and then just let it cool down and build up the weld, build up the weld, build up the weld until I essentially fill the hole. Um, it's possible to fill a hole, a big hole, even like this. See, see I put a line of weld on there. Do the same on the bottom. I'm going to do the same on this side. Once I've got a line built up, like I've, I've got a line of weld all the way around there now, I'm going to let that cool down because <coughs> it will be hot. And then I'm going to build on top of that weld and then just grind it all flush and it fills up that hole. Um, you can fill big holes with weld, you'd be surprised. But you literally have to wait, you know, a good five minutes now before I even come near that um, because that's what's going to cause you the problems. Believe me, thinking just be, I could technically weld all this in one go as in spot, 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 no problem. And for the first three or four minutes, it's going to look nice. After that, you're going to start seeing the panel all wavy. And then it's going to be doing the old, um, you know, the tin worm stuff where you just push the panel in. It's going to fall in and push out. And it's, um, 
tin canning it's called uh, and it just when you push the metal in it just starts tin canning it's horrible but that is solid i mean it is absolutely solid that i guarantee you i'm not going to warp this panel whatsoever with the way i'm doing it right this is the welder the Feronius trans steel 2200 it's not just a welder it's a mig it's a tig it's a stick it does absolutely everything and if you want to know how to build this awesome welding cart that holds two of the big bottles custom made go on my channel check it out um but essentially we're welding one mil let's say you want to weld 1.3 mil boom there you go 1.5 or 1.6 mil boom there you go two mil there you go two and a half mil there you go three and a half there you go how quick and easy is that it does everything for me wire speed amps you name it it does it um and believe me once you get your welder set up properly it makes all the difference for welding all the difference now hopefully you can see what i meant so i build up a layer around there of weld it's going to keep building on top but now because of this mark we've made look at that see the it is absolutely look see that the gap the gap in the middle is between our panel and the actual joggle we made you can you can clearly see the joggle mark and you can see my weld is filling up the joggle mark but look at that look how flat that panel is onto that see the panel is absolutely flat so essentially if it wasn't all this all this fillers that we we have to deal with i would just grind the head off that and i would be putting believe me the thinnest layer of of, of um fillers you've ever seen if i was doing a butt join it's completely different because the panel's going to move a lot more um so you know you have to pick your battles and you have to decide what joint you're going to be using for the vehicle you're working on um this doesn't suit every vehicle you know um but when you do it right it can suit every vehicle i don't care what anyone says if you have your lip at the bottom so the water cannot rest on the lip that's a good thing if you seal it and wax oil it or do whatever you'll do after the fact then again the water can't sit there and like i even said every single joint in a car is essentially a lap joint you know they're, they're, they're welded on top of each other the return lips for here they're all lap joints the water can sit in between them and rust here that's what happens so for people to say that these lap joints are terrible you don't know what you're doing you shouldn't do this and blah blah blah, blah it's just not true they do not know what they're talking about um you know this isn't a million pound one-off bloody rare car it's a transit van so we can get away with doing stuff like this right that's freezing cold now which is good so it means i can put my second layer on here Let that cool down. As that's cooling down, I can come back on this. through a little bit but we knew that all i'm going to do there is when i'm burning through i'm going to do exactly the same as what i'm doing here so i'm just going to go get a weld on top of that and then i work off my weld not the actual panel um but again i'm gonna to have to wait for that to cool down now again it's a waiting game problem with welding I'm just going to finish the rest of this off camera 
because you've seen what I'm doing, it's, it's the same thing. But hopefully you can really see what I mean about you know, having the joggle in the panel and just how smooth this panel is gonna be. It's just literally the, the thickness of the weld. And then, like I said, it means you don't have to grind down as much of the weld. The weld is taking this dint also, you know, the weld is filling this dint 98% of the way and the fillers does the other 2%. Um, which is just, you know, it's it's quicker and easier to, to grind the welds down because I do not have to grind these welds flat. I literally, once I get this done, uh, if it wasn't for these bits of blowing through here and blowing through there, I could literally w grind this down in 40 seconds, 30 seconds, literally, where if you was doing a butt joint, you'd be grinding that for, well, it could be... 10 15 20 minutes at, and you know overall where well, i'm doing this in seconds absolute seconds so this particular joint saves you a hell of a lot of time i've still got a little bit here to do i'm not going to worry about that but i just want to show you in real time me grinding this and this line here in real time with an old floppy disk it's not even a new one How quick was that and i guarantee you if i put this on here yeah look at that absolutely flat so there's just this line here that we create oh that's hot that we created but the fillers now is just filling in this tiny little line here what you can also do if you really really wanted you could come in here with another line of fillers uh, another line of weld and then grind that down and it'd be absolutely 100% flat. But that panel hasn't warped. And look, see? absolutely flat. And how quick was that? Seconds. If that was a butt weld, you would be grinding for a lot longer. So again, if I was doing something, you know, that I was more worried about, wanted to be better, I would maybe come back in here um, and weld it. I would have maybe made the join so that it would come up a little bit tighter than what this was. But again, you know, that all takes extra time and I wasn't worried about it with this particular van. So, and I also knew I had all this fillers here. So I'm bringing my fillers to about here. I'm gonna start fading off. So my fillers isn't going to come down any longer than there. Um, but you can just see, I'm going to do the rest off camera. You can just see how quick and easy it is um, doing it this way compared to any other joint. Right, the way I do my spot welds, there's loads of different ways. I have a spot welder, but um, not many people are going to have that. So I'll just show you how you plug weld. These plug welds, I'm not even going to grind down. They're absolutely perfect. But watch the one that I show you turn to shit. Anyway, the little the little machine I use to, to, to stamp these little holes in, the holes are never big enough. When I ordered the machine ages ago, I got the wrong size, but it doesn't matter. It gives you a nice pilot hole. So it's very easy to go through this with a drill bit then to make it bigger. And as it goes through, It's cleaning up all the paint that I that I put on the, the back side of it. Now, I like to start in the middle of the plug weld and then go around in circles and come out to the edge. And you get it nice and hot and it'll just melt into the... See if I can do it on camera. I don't know. Camera's in my way. But that is essentially 
smooth. It really is. It's a lovely, lovely plug well. So, see if I can get this on camera. I might not be able to, I'm going to try. Oh, look at that baby! Look how nice that plug weld is, people. Let's just get the light on. Look at that. It just looks like factory. Um, like I said, I am not even going to bother grinding them down. Because uh, once I put the sealer on, it's that thick, you're not going to see it anyway. Oh, sorry, the Schultz on. You're not going to see it. I'm not going to spend the time it's going to take to grind that down. Anyway, I'm going to now do all my plug welds all the way across. You've seen how I do them. They turn out really nice um, and very strong, which is the most important thing. Right, we are welded in. We are absolutely solid. All plug welded across the bottom and across the side. So I think I'm going to call it okay for this video. I even welded the two panels together and I cut the line in the middle to keep that gap. Look, once I actually put all the stuff over it, you're going to miss most of that line anyway. I don't really know why I did it. It really makes no difference. I'm going to do the filling and the bodywork in a separate video just because I think it's going to be easier. Even though I know when... I do the bodywork video and someone hasn't seen this and oh why did you do you did that one you did that blah, blah. and they're gonna think that I put this five ton of fillers on it anyway that's just fucking idiots on YouTube for you but as always hope it helps please like share comment and subscribe don't forget links up here links down below but most important don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one sorted